Hi, my name is Steve Faulkner. Welcome to Real Magic Review, and today I'm going to be reviewing Lockdown by Steve Cook. And before we carry on with the review, can you please hit the like button, subscribe and share this. If you think other people will like this, please do share it on social media. It makes a huge amount of difference and keeps the thing going, as does Card Magic Course. That's my online Card Magic Course. I add live sessions and new videos every month. Uh, so check that out. That's at cardmagiccourse.com. And that's all me teaching you everything I know and everything I learn. Uh, with permission, of course. So that's carbmagiccourse.com. It keeps the whole thing running and it's a great way to support the channel and support your learning. So this is uh, something I've, I've been really interested in Steve's stuff since I read Fake Genius. This is the book that I, I reviewed quite a while ago and his lecture notes that came before that point blank. And I'd heard a lot of people talking about his stuff. He's kind of underground-ish, I think you, you could say that, even though a lot of people know his work. He released a lot of stuff through through Alakazam, that's when I came into it, and before that, and he's, he's now released this through Kmart Magic um, with Liam Montia. Um, and uh, Stephen Short, sorry, I, I couldn't get the, get the head of me. Liam Montia and uh, Stephen Short now run Kmart Magic, and this is, this is a release with them. So I, th this was called Lockdown, and I thought it was going to be about lockdown, because we're nearly in lockdown, but it's not. It's, it's obviously a play on words, and it, but it's, it's uh, funnily enough, it's not really a... Uh, a a trick you can perform socially distanced. I'm sure there are ways of doing versions of it, but but this is something you will need to have spectators with you for, uh, which is the kind of strength of it. So it's great for family and friends and things like that at the moment. Obviously, when we can out and perform, it's a different thing. If, if you're watching this in the future, this is currently, I know it will say it, but this is um, the first review of, of January 2021, which of course still sounds very weird to say. This trick, let me get, let me tell you what you get. You get, oh God, why am I just grossly unprofessional, isn't it? It's all come apart here. Uh, <laughs> it's the start of the year, you can forgive me. Um, what you get with this is you get this padlock, you get a nice little bag, and you get some number cards. These are um, more than meets the eye. So they're cards with, with separate numbers on and backs, and they do, do more than you would expect. That's all I'll say. I mean, it's pretty obvious probably for some of you, but... Uh, let's just say that they're, they're gimmicked. Okay, uh, I think we can we can be safe with that. The the trick is this: you have the padlock. You introduce the padlock. It can be examined and looked at and all that kind of stuff. There's no gimmicks to see. Um, and you borrow a spectator's ring. You lock it onto the padlock. Pro there's a process of elimination down to to four cards, a four digit number. They then, you know, you build it up. They then do the four numbers on here. It does not open. And then you say, well. You know, I'm sorry, these are the four numbers, they're clearly in the wrong order, but you know, what order do you think the card should be in? This is incredibly fair. They've got four numbers in front of them, they put them in literally whatever order they like, and the key releases from the lock. So there's it's a strong effect because we've got the, anything where you borrow a ring it's got emotional heft doesn't it you can do a lot of presentation right you know like if you've ever performed uh, close-up magic professionally you know for loads of different people you know that every time you ask to borrow someone's ring they kind of go Ooh, and there's kind of meaning behind it now you can play on that obviously you've got to be very careful with it but you know that kind of image of their ring on that padlock and of course there's a gag where you kind of you you think you're going to get it off and you can't and then you have to go through the process so you can play a lot on it you can use that kind of that fear in a friendly way with a kind of nudge knowing you know they've got to really think they're going to get that ring back of course you're not going to you're going to sell the idea that you're going to go home with it genuinely because they will hate you but uh it it's it's got a lot to it there the the there's not a lot like more i can say about the the effect itself uh, I'll just go straight on to the, the, the good points and the challenges with the trick. Um, I do like this trick. I think it feels different. It feel, I like all of Steve's stuff. And I said, I think, before on, on the review of his book, I like it, but it is, does have a flawed feeling to it. And I think I love that kind of thing about flawed genius, that idea that, we, you know, some of my favourite films, and I think I've said this before, are flawed. They're brilliant, but there are flaws within them, and there are flaws within this trick. So first of all, the good stuff. The good stuff is that... It, it feels different. It feels not like any other trick. It brings in different aspects to it. It's kind of a performance piece. It's perfect for sitting uh, at a dinner table with friends afterwards, which of course is a challenge at the moment, but um, 
and it's really good for those kind of really laid back and formal when people go through a process and that process is can be the strength or the weakness of the trick um, I think it's like I said one of the other good things is it has the, the borrows a ring from a spectator puts it on a lock I do like that image I like that image sticking it on the table and then having that failure and trying to work through this way of getting it out um, and and it's a good it's it's a good fun piece of piece of work the the props are well made you get everything with you I think this is based by the way on a on a um, a trick from Point Blank, Blank called Digital Dilemma um, which uses a deck of cards this obviously uses uh, number cards and this again can arguably the strength arguably be the strength or the weakness of the trick because you know you've got this effect and it's all of how you get to that effect now obviously if it was real mentalism if you could really read minds if you could do all that stuff if they were reading minds then you would just say put the number in and it would it would release uh, of course that's the that's the perfect and we work back from that don't we and we work back from that with process and this is process heavy there's a lot going on here so if you perform this, I think you can make performance out of that process. I've said recently that I've rediscovered a lot of self-working card tricks and, and actually found a lot of joy in that stuff that I looked at originally and went, God, this is just a laborious way to get to what we do. But you can use that. You can talk about ritual. You can talk about the fact that, OK, um, we're going to try and tap into your intuition by ritual. This is a ritual that's usually done with tarot cards. That's where it originates from. But we're going to use these number cards because obviously we're going to find a number. You can, you can justify. I do think you need to justify it sometimes. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you can just go through a process and make it fun. But for me, if you're going to you do something with a lock and then introduce something completely different, which is cards. Cards and a lock don't really go together. I mean, you may be able to uh, make a link there, but, but I couldn't. So you have to kind of justify these cards. Liam says that, you know, they're cards from a kid's game. I would tend to go one step further if I was going to go through that uh, presentation and say the cards from a kid's game, uh, which, is a, which is the game where you have to kind of find out how to unlock a lot, you know, something like that. The, to me, if you just introduce them, it's kind of like a bit of a clank. It's like, OK, we were doing a thing with a lock and now we've got these cards. Um, it's, it's fun. I'm not saying it's not fun, but I think there has to be some sort of presentational hook. Again, going back to the strength of this, this, this there's room for lots of different storytelling with this with lots of presentations using the lock and the ring um talking about emotion uh, but i think you need that you're going to have to sit down i think and write it obviously liam in the presentation doesn't have much of that kind of presentation but he's just demonstrating it to teach it and that's the point i wouldn't take that and think that's the way to do it for me it needs a little bit more so the weaknesses are of this trick really all that process and think about it, if you want to, you can go through a different forcing system if you like. You can do, there are many ways of, of getting a number, but it has to feel super, super fair. But the really good thing is after all that process, and this is the positive, you kind of cancel out with this last phase of the trick. And the last phase of the trick is this bit where you've got the four numbers there and you go, right, it didn't work. So they know the four numbers don't work. And you say, right, really think about this and put them in any order you like. Now, even though you've gone through this process, and by the way, each of these processes does have a kind of sh fair shuffle in, in, um, before it, one from you and one from the spectator. So you can make it look, even though it's processed, you can make it look like they're really mixed beforehand. Um, and you can just say it's a, it's a fun way to get to where we're going. But the fact that afterwards, it's this completely fair thing and they do unlock it where it didn't work with the same numbers beforehand is what makes them just go, oh, I thought we were going in that. And you can even say that. I even thought you could talk about red herrings and talk about we went through all this thing, but it doesn't matter because it didn't work anyway. But now it does matter and we we're going to, you're not going to do any shuffles, you're not going to do any cuts, you're just going to move the cards around. And I think that's the really, it's a bit of the routine that got me and I went, oh, I kind of thought we were going down that route and I think again it's another presentational uh, way to present it so it's it's unique it's different it feels good it's a Steve Cook trick so if you like Steve Cook tricks you're gonna like them I do um, like them myself would I perform this at a walk around gig probably not because it's a bit long it's a bit of a sit down thing would I do it in parlor if I could find a decent presentation um, I might but I think it's really good for those informal presentations or for those people who who have that kind of almost like bizarre mentalism thing where they get this sort of stuff out and do do these tricks so um so there it is that's um Steve Cook there it is <laughs> Lockdown. <laughs>
I'm so sorry. I can't, I've, it's, it's not, I haven't even got much stuff here and I still can't find stuff. My head isn't working. I've got to get back into the new year. Uh, Lockdown by Steve Cook. Uh, all the details will be below. Please do look below and please check out all the links. Click through, have a look at the Card Magic course just to support the channel. That'll be great. Um, and like and subscribe. Have a great one. If you're watching this in real time, Happy New Year. Take care. Bye-bye.